The first segment of our show is going to be the what's new segment. It's brought to you by Cytex. And um, Cytex is a third generation family owned and operated linen, mats, and uniform company. They're really the good guys in the linen business. And I know a lot of people think that that's like an oxymoron, but they really are. Like the linen business is such a crazy business. They're the ones you can trust. They're going to come in and they're going to shoot you straight. Um, and they're transparent with their pricing. They have incredible quality. Uh, and their service is second to none. Please, please, please go to Cytex-Corp.com or give Ross Chandler a call at 270-823-2468. They are standing by. Oh, and I want to show you something. Cytex is a new sponsor, has hooked it up. They hooked you up, Delia. Oh. You, you ready for this? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you this. 52 is the high on Monday, and you now have a brand new vest. I like that one. And this vest, it's Nashville Restaurant Radio vest, and then uh, you also have a polo, oh. and our brand new Nashville oh. Restaurant Radio t-shirt. Totally outfitted. Outfitted. You can get your own. Not only Delia has her own, but you can get your own right now at NashvilleRestaurantRadio.com. We have these t-shirts. This is a tri-blend. It's like that super, super duper soft with the rayon in it. It's just the most comfortable thing in the world. Awesome. So we're excited to have Cytex. We are going to bring on um, a our first guest here in just a second. We're going to be talking to Mr. Tom Morales um, of, the, uh, of Tomcats fame. Uh, he was on our show a little while back in the middle of the pandemic, and he made a pretty big announcement just um, a couple days ago, and we're going to bring him on on uh in just a moment but let's um let's talk about what's new what's opening right now delia all right i'll try to like run through this really fast because i think he comes on in five minutes is that right yes well yeah he comes on at four or three forty-five. okay um so uh, first i'm not trying to play favorites um but locust open today and i am so pumped about some dumplings and shaved ice so um i tried to look to make a Reservation for today, and they're already booked up. So I'm going to get back here this weekend, probably because dumplings and Japanese style shaved ice. Like, Trevor just killed it. Like, everything he does, you know, he came from Tabard Food. And so to have someone of that caliber making a casual restaurant in just like 12 South neighborhood is really, really cool. So I'm excited for that today. Um, also, this week, you know, Jasper's from Deb and uh, Doug open on Monday. And Nikki's Coal Fired Bagels is coming to the Gulch on Saturday for the first time at the old Zoli Coffee Space. Another Caroline Galvin uh, mention if you'd like to have a drink. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Attaboy again reopened last weekend. So really, really good. Just exciting, like uplifting news from such a place that went through such a hard time. And Sid Gold's request room on Gallatin is open as of now. It's supposed to be a karaoke piano bar, but they're open sans karaoke for now. But they've got the cool thing. I mean, it's another silver lining because a lot of artists aren't touring right now. So they've got some great pianists that tour with big names that are just playing in this East Nashville bar right now. So that's happening. Um, I've been trying to catch up with what was happening in the old Royal Cleaners on 12 South. Um, and that's I've been dying to know. It's going to be a place called Emory from the owners of the distillery. So it's going to be like a wood-fired menu with pizza, burgers, steak, seafood. Um, it'll be a patio. So I'm trying to get more information on that. I think it's going to be spring of next year. So that's a coming soon thing. Um, I'm just glad it's a restaurant. Yes, I know. I was like, it has to be a restaurant. And then there's also, do you know what's going on with, um, was it Embers? The bar on 12 South? Like they're building a what patio, a two-story thing. So what I understand is that on top of that, uh, we talked about this last week. The on top of that is there's always like a bus parked out front, like a like a Volkswagen yeah. bus that sells yeah. T-shirts. Yeah. That's gonna be their permanent store. There's they're get, upstairs. I think they're oh. gonna make an. Uh, that's from everything I've heard. I mean, don't quote me on that, but I believe they're gonna make a store out of that. Okay, I was like, are they going to like a rooftop bar? Is what I kind of like went in my head to. And I it was that part last week, but. Um, so that's, I mean, coming soon and newly opening places. That's what I did. I did it kind of fast just now. Cause I was like, didn't realize I was talking really quickly. You uh -oh. did a fantastic job. And you know, Mr. Morales is waiting right here. Are you ready okay. to go? Let's go. 
He gave me the thumbs up. Let's bring him in right now, live. Mr. Tom Morales. Welcome, sir. How are y'all? <laughs> Hi. We, we're I'm making it, man. River. Yeah. I'm, What's that? I'm, I said, I'm up at the Buffalo River. I'm, I took a pause about six moons ago to to assess the situation. Sometimes if you're not in the leadership position in terms of uh, – Really, for the hospitality industry, I think we're getting great leadership, but for the federal government, we're not. And and it's kind of a sad day for, for, for me and the hospitality industry. We, we just laid off over 200 people and didn't lay them off, furloughed them. But it's, uh, it's I'm in the pause zone is what I'm in. I, I'm, I'm just looking at the river flow by. I saw an eagle this morning. I've got my sons with me. So uh, life is good on that side. On the other side... Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, sadness really in our company. Really. Uh, so tell me about that. I mean, you know, I've read the other day that you had had a uh, that you decided that you were going to go ahead and close Acme. Um, does that include also the Southern or any of your other ventures? Is that well, everything? We're, we're keeping the Southern open. I think you have a little bit more of a uh, an upscale crowd there being polite i mean and 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 people it's a higher ticket average so people are coming in there you know on best behavior generally we've had some incidences we had some people walk in with mesh masks that said fake news on it and they wouldn't put on a real mask so we just kindly asked them to leave uh you know that in the hospitality industry you you are a you know you're naturally you don't count your hours you don't count the money you make you you count the pats on the back the compliments how great your food is how well they were treated and when we become the police it's it diminishes the reason you're in the business first off and lower broad is like a perpetual trump rally i mean it's non-believers and covid spreaders and you, you got to look at it as college kids they're not flying in on airplanes you know they're they're driving in on cars and you know, I've got twin sons, 19 years old. Their prefrontal cortex is not developed yet. They're going to make decisions not based on uh, what's best for them or best for their mom or best for their grandmom. They're going to make them what's best for them and let's have fun and the hell with everything else. And I've I've, I've watched it for a month and I've watched uh, the metro government really just fail us. They can say... Uh, you know, they've got people down there watching it, but it is so obvious. I mean, it, it, you know, there's people packed in these places uh, and, you know, they come to our doors. We've had eight or nine cases of COVID since we opened in a month and some of them are serious. We've had one person, actually, he got it before we even opened. He lost 23 pounds and was in ICU for two weeks and he's 43 mm. years old. So, you know, and I've had other people that didn't even feel symptoms. So, I, you know, science is going to lead us through this. I think we could have instant testing at every uh, mass gathering place right now if, if the government, the federal government had the will. Uh, and then, you know, right off the bat, I'm getting ready to get on an airplane in a couple of weeks. American Airlines is going to test me for COVID before I get on the flight. So th there's a way right now to reopen the economy, but it's not just pretending that this isn't real or or, you know, saying it's fake news or whatever the hell you want to call it. But uh, it's sad. And I, I wish some of these people could could look in the eyes of the people that work for me. Uh, um, you know, who, who can make who can live off two hundred seventy five dollars a week with kids who aren't in school, you know, and they're feeding them. You, and, can't. You, know, you can't do it with nine hundred dollars a week. Everybody says, oh, there's no incentive for them to go back to work. Who in this country so can live off nine hundred dollars a week? Tom, I'm going to go back just, and I don't think anybody can, but I want to go back a little bit. And so you, you were kind of the one that held out the longest. You were the longest to wait to reopen. So this is going to be a two-part question. When you did decide to reopen, why did you decide to go ahead and do it? And then was there a moment that you realized that we're, we need to close this thing down? And what, was it like one thing that happened or was it just a collection of a bunch of things? Well, I did some soul searching to even reopen and the the reality was is the way the ppp money was designed if you didn't spend it you owed it or you lost it 
And so, uh, you know, and between our operations, we have 360 people that work for us, not including the, the musicians who depend on our stage, you know, all the other people. So uh, it was a difficult decision to reopen. And then uh, we watched the, the usual suspects just violate the mandates. I wrote a strong letter about three weeks ago to the mayor. He didn't even have the courtesy to respond to me. Uh, hmm. His leadership is shown in the fact that he won't even respond to to the news people who are trying to get a comment about what's going on on Lower Broad. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to walk down Broadway and look. You know, no one's wearing masks. The police, they're not citing anybody. You know, they're, they're handing out masks. <laughs> you don't have to wear it. You know, just here, here's a mask. You know, and I'm, 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 I, they're in an impossible position. I understand that. And I, I know we need hotel rooms. I know we need the, the business back. They need tax dollars. Wink, wink. That's the way I look at it, you know. Uh, but it puts the safety of, of my people in, in jeopardy because we're having to deal with these yahoos. And then you, 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 you put us in an unfair advantage because the guy next door doesn't follow the rules. And so then they come in with the attitude, well, I didn't have to do it next door. Why do I have to do it here? Well, because we're doing it the way the community has asked us to do it. And, you know, so, uh, you know, you can see the frustration in my face and probably hear it in my words. But, um, well, I mean, do you have, I think you have every right. Do you, do you have, is it, is it like a group of downtown owners of these bars that can hang out? And do you guys meet in a room and go, hey, if I'm going to be the one policing, I need you to do something similar, or is it every man for himself? It's Nevada freestyle, every man for himself. You got people that don't believe it's real. You got people that think you open your doors and magically the economy comes back. Well, it comes back for 50% of the people who don't believe that it's a, a pandemic. And we need, you know, it, it's so short sighted. And for the city and for Butch Spearden and everybody else, to, what we need to be advertising is Nashville is a safe city. We take your health seriously so that the Music City Center will be packed. Then there's no nuance in the application. You could put 30,000 people in an outdoor stadium and not jeopardize anybody. But they choose to put 10,000 in there. And then, you know, then everybody packs the sports bars. You know, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just stupid. I don't know. But I just think like common sense. I was raised to, you know, to do the right thing. But anyway. <laughs> you know, I never frustrated because you know, we were like – the first one to close, the last one to open, you're doing it right, you're socially distancing, you're taking all the precautions. I understand it's got to be so frustrating because you are a trailblazer in that way. And you're certainly a trailblazer on Broadway in that way. So, you know, I mm -hmm. respect you speaks out against what everyone else is doing just in any in any situation. So kudos to you for that. But I guess, what do you think, what can they do differently to make it a safe place where people can come safely now? I think of that. The cat's out of the bag. I think we're seeing all these rural spikes around Nashville are probably the, the lower broad incubators that have sent them back home and now they're getting grandma sick. And, you know, once again, I'm, I'm not a scientist. I'll listen to them and I believe them over a politician any day. And, and uh, you know, they kind of greenwash everything. They're trying to say, oh, we're doing this. We're doing that. No, they're not. They're saying the right things, but they're not doing it. And they know they're not doing it. And so, um, you know, we're 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 in a desperate situation, and the whole industry is. I mean, I I, I had I planned for a rainy day, and not a pandemic, but uh, we we had ninety days of money sitting on hand to pay all the fixed costs, and the PPP ran out in October. So you can just do the math. We're we're on our last ninety days without raising more money or borrowing more money or or uh, closing. So. The, and and I know I'm in better shape than a majority of the people uh, in the industry, really, because I talk to them. And, you know, you ask a question, you've got things like they could close lower broad and, and spread the people out off the sidewalks. Well, they don't do it because two bar owners down there are friends with the mayor. They don't want to do it. You got the governor who's trying to take the 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 uh, the mayor's power away from him from even declaring a, a mandate on health 
So, you know, it's a frustrating time. November 3rd, hopefully everybody will go out and vote. And I don't care who you vote for, but vote. And and I do care who you vote for, actually, but I'm not going to tell you. Uh, but I, I, I think that we, we need to we need to vote for common sense and, and, uh, and true leadership. Leadership is transparent. Leadership is doing the right thing, even when it hurts. And uh, it's not about me. Uh, if it was about me, you know, I just do, you know, I could just do Nevada freestyle and just ask for volunteers to come to work and get sick, you know, but I don't do that. So thank you for that. <laughs> no, I was, I gotta admit, I was confused this morning I looked down and I live right beside a liquor store. So I looked down and there was a line outside the liquor store at 9 a.m., which I guess is when they open. And then I was like, did they know something that I know they don't know yet? I was like, is the mayor going to shut down stuff today in the press conference? But then I logged on to the press conference at 9.30. Sure enough, um, no, he didn't say anything. He said cases are spiking, hospitals are full. But there was no mention of any changes to the rest of it. And I was kind of surprised because I felt like when I saw that, I was like, oh, we're about to shut down again. We didn't. So what do you think? I mean, do you think the mayor feels his hands are tied as far as that goes because there's such clap back about the economy or what, what do you think is happening? And will well, it go after elections? Uh, I think, I, I pray that after November 3rd, there'll be, uh, let, let, let's just back up. The hospitality industry is 12% of the working econ uh, working economy. We, we Small business provides 56% of the jobs in America. Uh, we are the largest employer of people other than the federal government. So you think you're safe in your job and in your position. Uh, they didn't give me any relief on the HEPA filters I put in my establishments to kill the virus. They didn't give me any relief on the $400,000 in AP I have sitting owed money I'm on payment plans with, you know, what they did is they gave me money to pay the landlords who now I have 50% of what I used to have for the same amount of money. Uh, I've got, uh, they gave me money for my employees, which was God bless them. And they, they gave me money for the banks, you know? So the, the airline industry got a tax cut and they got a big $220 billion, you know, they're a publicly traded company. They bought their stock back. Then on, on October 1st, American Airlines laid off 15,000 employees. United laid them off. They didn't give them the money and tell them how to spend it like they did us. They, they gave it to them and said, do what you want with it. Well, if they would given me this PPP money, it, you know, I wouldn't have ever reopened, number one, until the science says to open. And we would have done things smart. But, you know, an entrepreneur, I... I let me tell you, I've never had self-pity. I started with nothing. I'll end with nothing. We all come into the world naked. We'll go out naked. You know, I, that, that part doesn't bother me. The part that bothers me is you're dealing with uh, human beings who, if I don't keep them on some kind of uh, payroll or uh, whatever, you know, they're going to lose their insurance. So, uh, and, and mm -hmm. you know what's the soul of Nashville? is that probably 30 to 40% of our people that work for us have a day job and a dream. They're here for music. They're here for the arts. You know, they play gigs, they practice, and they get their little, you know, they, they make great tips and they make a 30 hour week living so that they can qualify for their insurance and pay their rent. And then they go and pursue their dream. One day, you know, they're gonna be big, big, big deals. And, you know, and I'm gonna be just a restaurant owner. But we, we want to, we want to, I'm sorry, the phone, we want to give, give them the opportunity to realize their dream. And, and that's the soul and the core of who Nashville, what Nashville is. It isn't pedal taverns with girls booty grinding. You know, it's not, no one moved here, no corporation moved here because of the pedal taverns. No one moved here because of Kid Rocks. No, no one moved here, you know, I can give you a hundred other examples. The creative business has always been seedy, but it was seedy built around creativity. Yeah, George Jones would get drunk down there, and so would Willie Nelson and smoke some pot and all that. But that was the seediness that, that came with the territory. Now we just have, if, if this is the, the Nashville. Exploitation. Yeah, if this is the Nashville we want, then, 
you know, it's not the national I'm going to be part of or participate in. And that's what I've chosen not to do. Well, that's a bold, <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's putting your money where your mouth is. I mean, you know, that's, that's backing up what you're saying. And that's a bold statement. Well, we can limp along or we can, you know what, if everybody came together as a community and, and, and said, let's do the right thing. When, when the tornadoes hit in East Nashville, no one said, it's a hoax. I'm not going over there to help those people. It's a hoax. You know, they didn't do that. They went over there and helped people. When the floods of 2010, people didn't say, it's a hoax. It's fake news. It's not really happening. No, we went over and helped. That was what Nashville was. The advertising we give ourselves. I have a saying, a skunk gets his reputation from the advertising it gives himself. And, and to be 100% honest, we're just stinking the place up right now. Yeah, I... I um... I remember the days after the the tornado, just the Nashville strong and how passionate everybody was right during that time. We're about to go into a segment where we talk about East Nashville. We're going to be talking about that moment, and um, I'll love to get to get back there. What do you think that if we're talking to the people out there, let's just say thousands of people who live in Nashville in the hospitality industry are going to hear this? What can the individual do? What can the individual person do besides November third? Go vote. I mean, we know that. But right now, just in your opinion, like, what do we need to be doing? Can we organize? What can we do to help? Well, no, we, we're all in the same boat. The, the, the real people are, are doing the right thing. They're wearing masks. Uh, they're hunkering down. You know, they're not doing unhealthy behaviors, you know. And, and I, you know, I, I, God bless my 20-year-old. They're 19. They'll be 20 soon. But they, they haven't done anything and, and i feel so sorry for them you know they didn't even have a date you know in six months because mm. they're they're worried about their mother and her she has a pre-existing condition so you know it, it, it's and they're worried about me i guess because i do too i'm 65 <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad this is radio <laughs> are you on video too <laughs> oh, yeah. life's a struggle no but I, I i've been i just feel like uh you know, the thing that I am grateful for is that I've been able to slow down, spend time with my kids, get to know them better. It's kind of been a reprieve. You know, they go off to college, you think, oh, they're gone, I'm free, okay, blah, blah, blah. But then they come back into your life uh, and I see them watching them practice guitar, which is something they never did prior to COVID. And, and I see them doing, uh, they're working out and they've you know, put on all this, they're, they're healthy and they're eating healthy and they're, and they're doing things that, that maybe wouldn't have happened if they'd just gone off to college and party for four years. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that. And, and, and I'm, I'm grateful that we've done the right thing because you know who I hear the most from and means the most. And sometimes I cry by myself because of it is, is the employees. I mean, you get an email from somebody that says, I know I'm going to be living off $275 a week, but anything's better than going into that building, knowing that we don't control the people who come into it. And, and that's an emotional thing. Wow. That's a, it's an incredible statement. You know, I think, I think that's one of the things that people from the exterior don't recognize is going on. You know, people, selfish people that care about themselves and their own having a good time going out at the expense of other people, hearing the perspective from the actual people in the trenches doing the work that when you close down and they say, we're going to go on 275 a week because we'd rather do that than have to go in and be in an unsafe situation because of that. It's, um, it's, it's heartbreaking. Oh, we've got females that are pregnant, you know, and they, and they, they have to work. They want to work. We'll work. I don't want to work, but I, I have to work. And, and, you know, that's heartbreaking. I mean, it's heartbreaking. I don't, you know, you can't say no, but you, you don't really want to put them in that situation either. So, uh, we, we're, we're everything, I mean, I sound dire here, but I, you know, I don't know whether this is a serious thing. It may be weakening, but you know what? Let's science, science tell us, you know, this fake mirage of open up, you know, well, Bridgestone does, it's a 30 story building. They don't have a soul in it. You got, mm. you know, Pinnacle Bank, which is my bank and, and, and they're a bunch of great people. They had a COVID outbreak. There's 150 people in the Pinnacle building, you know, mm. all the people that are living off the stock market. They're not in their offices. No. 
Well, Tom, I saw you post on Facebook. I I saw you post on Facebook. Customers. (laughs) What's that? You said probably just lost about fifty customers. That's okay. You know what? Um, I think that I think that you've got to speak the truth, and you got to speak from your heart. And we try and do that here. I saw that you had posted that this was happening on Facebook yesterday or day before, and I knew we were doing this show today. And I just wanted I wanted to give you a chance instead of just that that paragraph where you say something on a Facebook post, the ability to come on and talk it out a little bit. I love. I wanted to hear kind of a little bit about why you had to make that decision and how hard that decision was to be made. And um, I salute you, man. I salute you for having morals and the the backbone to stand up and do the right thing in a time that it's it's really hard because a lot of people are straight their backs against a wall and they don't have options. And um, your option right now, the one you're taking, is to take a pause and uh, do the right thing. And I salute you. And thank you for coming on the show today. Let me just say one thing in closing. A- Please. I, there's greed that motivates people. There's desperation that motivates people, and and then and and then there's just you know the right thing to do. And I there's people that are in desperate situations that have to be open, and I respect them. I don't the people that act out of greed that don't follow the rules are the people I'm talking to. Heard. Tom Morales, thank you so much for joining us on the roundup today. And uh, love to have you back anytime on the show. We'll do another interview. Thank you so much. And nice to meet you. Bye, Bye-bye. Tom. Wow. I'm going to turn off my hair. Sorry. <laughs> I thought I had that off. I didn't hear it. But... Well, that was nice of him to come on the show and, and give us that update. And it's funny, I've never met him before. Like, that was my first time, like, sort of interacting with him. But really? I, like, yeah, I know. Um, I usually interact with, like, the first, like, Lauren Morales. Um, so I haven't interacted with him before. So we're Facebook friends. So I saw his uh, post on Tuesday, but that's not the extent of it. So, no, he's. I admire anybody with that kind yeah, he... of passion for his employees and taking care of his own and to do his own thing. Um, I just admire that. You know, you know what I love about him is, um, and it's not just me being a homer, but one of the re- main things I loved having when he did the interview on Nashville Restaurant Radio is just his love for Nashville, his love for the city of Nashville, the history of Nashville, and just really caring about everything that goes on uh, inside of Nashville. And he's been a champion for it. I mean, you notice like the Southern. If you, I got to, he, he gave me a tour of the Southern. He walked me around the Southern. I think the second week they opened. And he showed me all of the things. There's like Easter eggs all over the Southern. He's like, and this picture over here, I put this right here because it faces this way. And I met this guy on a day where he told me that the South was the way to be. So the picture of him is facing this way. And there's like so many little things like that all over the Southern just because he has so many memories. And, you know, it's not, he's not doing anything for any other reason. And I love that. Like his true North is like, I just want to, I want to do what's right. right. And that's so refreshing. It's, it's not, you just don't ever see it. 